Yep. Oh, that was sick. Had my plastic pretty close. I uh, looked down below and there were two uh, yellowtail kingfish following it up and sure enough, I was getting close to the boat so I dropped the plastic back down and then I watched them chase it down, closed the bail, popped it back up and sure enough, he annihilated it. I just watched that whole thing go down. My name's Robert Field and I ditched the corporate grind to pursue my passions for fishing and travel. Come up! Nice! This time, I'm on a month-long expedition across Australia and New Zealand with the boys from Fish Village. Hooked up, hooked up, hooked up, hooked up! You're watching up. Field Trips Down Under. Nice work, bro! Look at this! Look at this! Alright, so we're leaving the protection of the island this morning, uh, day five, six, I can't even remember. And uh, it's a bit windy, but it's supposed to die off. We're kind of just clearing the deck right now, so nothing goes over. We came out of here, Port Fitzroy, which is just a big cove with an island in the middle of it. We come out of here and we're heading out here, which is the Mokaheen House, or famously known in New Zealand as just the boats. That's little barrier, we passed that on the way out. That's arid, so we've been out here, around here, fished out here in the middle of the ocean, come back to Fitzroy for the night, and now we're now making our way to the Mokahinau Islands, which nice. is a very small group of rocks in the middle of nowhere. And as, you can... as we depart from the calm waters of Port Fitzroy and begin the voyage to the Mokohinau Islands, or the Mokes, as the locals call them, we realize that this ride is going to be a bumpy one. It's getting a little bit nautical this morning. Skipper Aaron doesn't even seem to notice, but as the rest of us jostle around and try to maintain our footing, several of the group begin to feel a bit uneasy. For a few of them, the three hour journey feels more like an eternity. But as we begin to spot the mokes on the horizon, the sheer beauty of these remote islands commands our attention. I stand by what I said back in Australia, that people make places. But there are exceptions to every rule, and some places simply make themselves. And these are the mokes. Quite literally a little spit of land, a little island chain out in the middle of the ocean. Super protected little bay, little cove, little lagoon. Just absolutely gorgeous. Tons of little caves and stuff in the rocks. This place is magical. This will be our home for the next couple nights. We'll be doing some fishing uh, as soon as this wind dies down. It's got all the kayaks in, half the group is in. It's still pretty windy, but it's dying down. It's supposed to continue dying down through the afternoon, so we're gonna kind of stick in close to the mokes here, sticking close to the island, kind of stay out of it. Uh, you can get good snapper off the rocks, right off the rocks here. And then as it dies down, I'm gonna head out with a live bait, see if, uh, I mean, there's marlin out here, there's mahi, there's all kinds of stuff, so you never know. There's great snapper fishing right on the rocks. Steven Tapp was the first guy in, went around the corner, there's a protected lagoon, and he said, like, every cast right off the bat, he's catching snapper. So they are here, they are hungry, we are in the middle of nowhere. Should be pretty sweet. It's paradise, in the middle of a big ocean. Just a couple rocks. A couple rocks. Yep, yep. Yeah, just before you jump in. Yep, yep. Yeah, fish on. I think that was a uh, second cast. We got one on. Doesn't feel big. Strong fish for their size. Pretty decent guy, actually. Nice little snapper. Uh, second cast of the day. Not a monster, but I will definitely take it. And that is on the uh, the Reeves lures. Help assassin from Reeves lures. These lures were designed for calico bass. And now here they are, out in uh, the middle of the Pacific Ocean, in New Zealand, catching fish. Great start to the day. Been out here about uh, five minutes fishing. Never a bad start. Oh, yep, I'm on. Snapper maybe, or maybe one of these Conway? I don't know what that is. Not a king. Yeah. Too much fun. Great eating side snapper, that's two in the box. All right, Mike's hooked up. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Marty just looked down, saw a bunch of big kingfish. Mike uh, dropped the jig down and hooked up. Marty says the best thing I can do right now is go over there and jig next to Mike. Yep. Oh, that was sick. I looked down and uh, was had my plastic pretty close. 
I uh, looked down below and there were two uh, yellowtail kingfish following it up and sure enough, I was getting close to the boat so I dropped the plastic back down and then I watched them chase it down, closed the bale, popped it back up and sure enough, he annihilated it. I just watched that whole thing go down. Just a small kingfish, but that was awesome. Really, really cool to watch. Just watch that whole thing happen. <laughs> Water's crystal clear. Uh, I got to watch the behavior of that kingfish like just perfectly. Oh, that was so cool. Nice, it's not a big fish, but uh, can't beat it when you're literally like playing the fish based on his behavior, you're reacting to how he's reacting and uh, got him to hit this plastic. This is also on the Reeves lure. I could tell it was a kingfish, didn't know if he'd hit it, but sure enough, he did. And I got to watch the whole thing go down. Oh my gosh, that's a blast. Hey buddy. Ah, come on, I'm gonna let you go. Ah, just chill. Ah, come on. Ah, these fishes do not give up. Ah. Ah, oh, yeah, just a little rat king, but uh, too much fun on the Reeves lure plastic. Ah, that was awesome. Too much fun, beautiful fish, and tons of fun on this light rod, this little lamb glass, 10 to 20 pound test rod. Beautiful fish. You. That's a yipper. Ah, come on, get away from there. Fishing a shallow patch of water, it's only about 12 meters deep. Nice kick to the tail on it. So I've got a bomb passing under me at the moment, it's only six meters deep. Try and keep the fish high enough that he's not gonna get under the bomb on me. He's trying, he's kicking his tail, he's trying to get his head down. There we go. Yeah! Yeah, oh! Got hit again and missed it. All right, so I just snagged this. And this gives me a pretty good indication of some of the uh, structure and stuff that I'm fishing down there. Fishing in this place is unlike anywhere else I've wet a line. The epic landscape, wild water, and ravenous fish make for an experience that I will never forget. All right, we got bait on the surface here, and we saw some huge explosions. There's some fish here hunting these fish, push them to the surface. I got a big school below me. Fish all on, but it doesn't feel very big. That's a yippa. Woo! <laughs> yippa! Oh. <laughs> oh, <man>. oh. <laughs> and there he goes, but I got more marks below me. <laughs> Yeah, it might be a snapper, but it hit about halfway up. Think that shark's making it nervous? So Marty saw a shark, asked him how big it was, and it followed a snapper up, and he said it's big as the yak. And these are 13 and a half foot kayaks. Now I'm pretty sure I've got a snapper on. I'm uh I'm in a hurry right now. Oh man. Might be a yellow, I don't know. It's a yellow. Yeah. Tons of fun. Oh, non-stop action today. Non-stop. That worked. All right, so Paul Roundtree here just gave me some advice, told me to drop down to a smaller jig head. Said it would give me some hang time. I did just that. I put on a three eighths instead of like the one and a quarter ounce I was using, and uh, that was first cast. Fish on. Thanks, man. It's almost like you know what you're doing. Almost. <laughs> yeah, it's like a decent fish. It's not a monster, but it's good. Woo. So yeah, you can imagine just that kind of slower fall. Looks a little more natural. And uh, that was literally, I just closed the bale and was already on. He hit it on the fall. I wasn't working it, wasn't really doing anything. Uh, let's see what we got. I'm assuming it's a snapper. Yeah, looks like a snapper. Looks like a pretty good one. This might be my PB, man. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I haven't really caught a big one yet. And uh, we are keeping snapper today. Yeah, I think that's my PB. Yeah, I think it's PB. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a net. 
Uh, thanks. Relentless, he will not give up. Yeah. No. <laughs> Get him Get him no. 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 Uh, hey. Yeah. Definitely my PB. Woo. Yeah. New PB, bro. I didn't do anything. You just hit it on the fall. Yeah, they said. It's almost like this had something to do with me dropping down the jig head size. I don't know. Probably just coincidence. <laughs> nice! Alright, new personal best snapper on artificial. Too much fun. Let's see if we can't get some more. As we goof around on the boat bragging about our catches and preparing fresh sashimi, I make a startling realization. Half of these people were complete strangers just six days ago. Yet now, it feels like I'm surrounded by family. It's crazy how sharing experiences in a place like this can bring people together. This is how we do it, New Zealand style. It makes me think of all the incredible human beings that have been introduced into my life since beginning this endeavor of trying to turn my love for fishing into a career. There's just something special about people who embrace the outdoor lifestyle, whether it be through fishing, kayaking, hiking, camping, or whatever. In my experience, this lifestyle tends to attract good people, and this crew is no exception. Hi, Brandon. The fish are just a bonus. Paul bringing some fish back. I was like, uh, bro, your boat's looking a little low in the water. <laughs> Might be time to go drop some fish off. Oh my God. Hey, now hold on. These two little ones are mine too. So if you add them all up. <laughs> People will say he's long arming. <laughs> now that is a snapper. You. So it's day six. We are running short on rations. We are out of soy sauce, ladies and gents. This is, uh, Pretty moderate crisis mode, I would say. But we still got wasabi. That's a yeah, buddy. Fresh fish don't even matter. Guys are getting all loose on day 30. I don't even know. So we're out of soy sauce. This is a borderline crisis situation. Luckily, we got Nick Adwa on board and he made some ceviche. We got some rice. It is delicious. You guys gotta try this. Ceviche, rice. And he's out. He's gone, folks. Coming up in the last episode, we're climbing to the top of the island to check out the view from above. Now this is living. But before we all say goodbye, there are still plenty of hungry fish to be caught. Oh, dude, stud. What a trip.